Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we have a special guest at the Newegg TV studios. This is Brian from Western Digital. And Brian, thanks a lot for stopping by today. Thanks for having me. Uh, what we're here to talk about is the new Velociraptor, uh, the newest series of Velociraptors I should say in the series of Velociraptor um, mechanical hard drives from Western Digital. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a, a, a new version out. It's available in a few, available in a few different capacities. And uh, for starters, why don't we go over some of the features of this new hard drive. Sure, um, be glad to. So one of the key things about Velociraptor, and it's the same as the, the old generation, is that it is a 10,000 RPM drive. Uh, it has a, it supports a SATA interface, just like the old Velociraptor, but we've uh, taken some technology twists. Uh, we've increased the capacity. So uh, now it's available at uh, one terabyte, 500 gig, and 250 gigabytes. Uh, and to achieve that, we've employed advanced format technology, which is a technology we've been em employing in our desktop drives and our mobile drives for quite some time. So many of you may be familiar with that. Uh, Brian, actually, we have a uh, one of we have the 600 gig version of the Velociraptor right. here. Um, right. It's we've we've used these in a few of our uh, different editing systems that we have here at Newegg TV. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a very solid drive for us. So um, as you're mentioning, um, just to go over the features of this, and we can use this as sort of a basis of, uh, for comparison. So both the drives are 10,000 RPM. Right. Uh, both drives have a, this is act actually a 2.5 inch drive um, within a sled here, and that's right. uh, to provide that's additional ice cooling. Pack, the ice pack, as we call pack. it. Yes. Yeah. And that, that gives it some additional cooling. That's correct, yeah. So, uh, you know, given the fact that these are 10,000 RPM drives, you know, they are a bit, um, they run a bit hot. Right. A little bit warmer um, than... Yeah, and so we have included this in an ice pack, which has some uh, cooling features, some cooling fins that allows it to perform very well in a 3.5-inch chassis or the 3.5-inch slot. Um, and they do very well, and, and in fact, the majority of these uh, drives are used in a 3.5-inch slot in a desktop or a workstation platform. Okay, so bear in mind that even though the drive itself is 2.5-inch, generally speaking, it will be used within uh, the sled here, so should be installed in a 3.5-inch drive in, in uh, the majority correct. of use case scenarios. Yeah, we, we, we don't want anybody pulling that 2.5-inch out, and we really can't use it anywhere else, and we have some other options and other drives in our portfolio for 2.5-inch uh, uh, workstation and server applications. Okay, and uh, you're mentioning the formatting is a little bit different. You have the advanced format for the newer drive. That's right. And um, just from a real high level, uh, what what is the basic difference between the two? So, so advanced format has been around since 2009. Um, it is a format that uh, hard drive manufacturers, and not just WD, but also CE, Hitachi, Toshiba, etc., have employed in order to get more format efficiency out of the drive. Um, now, the good news is that uh, we go to what's called uh, from 512 um, sectors to 512 byte sectors to 4K byte sectors. Uh, in doing so, though, it may, may run into a bit of compatibility issues, but if you have the latest operating systems and latest applications, you should have no problems. WD also offers a tool on our website that you can download uh, to ensure that your data is aligned uh, and, and works well. So for the most case, I think the industry is ready for advanced format, mm -hmm. and so we thought it was ready to put it on a Velociraptor, particularly because Velociraptor is targeted at high-end um, uh, creative systems, high-end workstations, and those systems use the latest operating system, so it should not be a problem. Okay, so that's uh, one of the benefits you get with the new Velociraptor as compared to the, uh, the slightly older one here. Um, another uh, difference here is going to be the capacities we already mentioned. So uh, this, for example, is a 600 gig uh, Velociraptor, which was the uh, most uh, had the most highest capacity drive right. prior to now. Now we have the one terabyte version available, right. and uh, I understand you guys have actually been able to increase the density of the actual spinning platters on the That's drive. That's correct. So both drives are a three are three platter designs, um, and uh, we've gone from 200 gigabytes per platter to 333 per platter. Now one of the advantages of going to one terabyte, 500 and 250 is you're actually aligning with more I'll call it desktop like capacity points. Mm -hmm. At 600, 900, I'm sorry, 600, 300, and, and I think 150, um, those are more aligned with what's traditionally be used in the enterprise space. Well, what we learned is that this has been had a, had a strong following in workstations and high-end client systems, so we made it easy by going to a one terabyte to allow you to upgrade, right? You could just transfer your one terabyte, your old 500, right, mm -hmm. and just mirror it or ghost it over to this new drive. Uh, the other thing is that you have a wide range. You have one terabyte for that massive uh, space, and then you have 250 if you want to, say, rate up three of them for a RAID 5, and, and want to just squeeze the performance out of it. So those three capacities give you a lot of flexibility. 
And uh, you have been mentioning that whether you're uh, looking at doing a workstation or you're looking at enterprise storage, that uh, RAID performance in particular for these drives has been very, uh, very impressive? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And, and I think that's been uh, uh, talked about in the press a lot. Uh, people that have used Velociraptor in a RAID environment have been very pleased with it, and it does scream. You know, it's very fast. Okay. Now, before we move on to some of the, uh, um, the positioning of the drive and, and uh, where you think it's going to make where folks can make the best use out of it if they're actually going to be putting together a system. Um, one last thing to touch on. So here, the, the existing drive is labeled as enterprise storage, right. um, which is not a label that is here on the new Velociraptor. That's correct. And um, uh, what, was the, what was the reasoning behind well, that decision? The rationale for, behind that isn't that uh, we haven't changed the design philosophy of the drive, and I think that's really important. This is still a rock-solid, high-reliability drive. We have not designed, uh, changed the design fundamentals. We haven't uh, changed the feature set. It still has the rotation acceleration feed forward. It's so it still supports T-Layer for RAID environments. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the features uh, are, are remain the same. So I wanted to make sure that that was clear. The reason for moving it is twofold. One is, as we looked at the marketplace, it turns out that a lot of the Velociraptor was used in high-end, creative professional, content professional um, workstation type systems. Mm -hmm. And so we're really just embracing that marketplace. And in fact, our marketing campaigns and our positioning in this drive will go in that direction. On the other hand, on, on, on the enterprise side, we have introduced our third generation 10,000 RPM SAS drive, which we're not covering today, but it's, it's our WDXE drive. Okay. And it's had uh, great uh, adoption in the marketplace and interest in the marketplace. And we want to move forward with that drive as our uh, 10,000 RPM solution in the enterprise space. Okay, so um, you're still going to get the same level of reliability uh, that you would, even though it doesn't necessarily say enterprise on it. That's correct. Okay. So this is a 1.4 million hour MTBF drive. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing, 1.4 million hour MTBF. And again, all of the, the, the features and, and reliability, the rock solid reliability that you would come to expect from a, a Velociraptor is, is unchanged. Okay, and uh, you're mentioning that uh, you're noticing uh, a lot of the use case scenarios that people have been using the Velociraptors for. Um, it gets into some more of the uh, content creation type stuff, and that's actually some of the uh, really good benefits that you can get from using one of these drives. That's absolutely true. You know, one of the things about um, when people look at hard drives and look at the performance of hard drives, and, and compare it to something like an SSD, there, there seems to be a relationship between the types of workloads that you use versus the type of storage device that you're looking to, to use. An example here would be, um, and I'll just pick on hybrids for a second. Hybrids are great. I mean, obviously in concept, you know, if you have very predictable workloads, if you uh, use um, small applications or you load the same applications many times, mm -hmm. you'll get the benefit from a hybrid. There's, there's no doubt about that. Now you look at where, what kind of platforms have that kind of workload, notebooks. Mm -hmm. So where do you see the first hybrid drives? You see them in notebooks because that's where you see those types of behaviors and workloads. Flip it around, look at enterprise. Enterprise is very unpredictable, and you don't know what data is coming in. So you can't really take advantage of a, uh, I'll call it a, a, a you know, a memory technology or something where you're trying to remember what was the last thing I pulled, mm -hmm. what was the last file I stored. So that's where you probably will see the last implementation of hybrid. Same thing with this drive. When you look at workloads, there are read intensive workloads and there's write intensive workloads. Mm -hmm. um, when we introduced Velociraptor uh, many years ago, uh, it had a very strong following in the gaming sector, right? Well, gaming itself is a workload that's very read-centric. Um, and so with the advent and introduction of SSDs and some hybrid and even dual drive setups, mm -hmm. the SSD and the large drive, it seems like uh, that is sort of adopted SSD. And, and honestly, rightly so. I think that, uh, you know, in those types of applications, you may see that advantage. Mm -hmm. Velociraptor has still had a strong following in the market. And as we looked into the market, we said, okay, even after the influx of SSDs, where is this drive being used? Mm -hmm. And it turns out that is being used in workstations and high-end content creative systems where you're using a lot of, um, where you, I'm sorry, you're doing both reads and writes. Okay. Video editing is the biggest area where we see this being used a lot. Because it, and when you look at the video editing kind of workload profile, it's it's there's a lot of writes, there's a lot of reads and writes, and so we think, yes, this is it makes sense now because, whereas SSDs are phenomenal in reads and they're sort of they're good in writes, uh, hard drives, especially a fast hard drive, is very good at both, and you get the one terabyte capacity to boot, so you have a combination of high capacity, high uh, performance in both reads and writes, and high reliability. 
And when you're working with larger data sets, like you would be working with, say, if you're doing video editing, you have huge files with right. the HD video. Um, is that another situation where sequential reads and sequential writes, which uh, the uh, velociraptors definitely do excel in, is that uh, someplace where you get a lot of benefit? Absolutely. Okay. And in fact, um, you know, if you look at the uh, the future of the digital universe, right? More people are using more complex tools and, and digital cameras with, with more pixels or megapixels, right? Going from 10 to 36 megapixels. You have uh, HD video cameras, and now they're talking about 3D video and potentially 4K video. Mm -hmm. So you know that those files are just going to get bigger and bigger. And these content professionals, uh, you know, call them the, you know, the people that do their own movies at home or people that do uh, artwork or, or create their own movies, right? Mm -hmm. 3D rendering have to deal with larger and larger files. And so they need a system, not only with huge processing power, but huge fast storage. And so this is perfect. Uh, Velociraptor is perfect for that environment where you need uh, high performance, high capacity, high reliability uh, drive. So it, it's almost, uh, it's great that the market is is needing a device like that because we have the perfect device for it. Okay, and um, just to illustrate some of these use case scenarios, we have uh, just a few demonstrations. Uh, so we're going to pull up a few slides here really quick for you guys to uh, just show some examples of uh, where you could actually gain a lot of benefit from going with a Velociraptor. So here we're taking a look at the PC Mark Vantage subtests, and uh, PC Mark Vantage is it's a slightly older benchmark, but it does run through a range of tests. So there on the bottom, you can see we have, uh, for example, Windows Defender, uh, Windows Media Player tests, application loading, and um, uh, what 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 would you say are some of the, the highlights? Of so what we have here is just a comparison. I can show you the overall Vantage score, and it does show the Velociraptor, the latest Velociraptor, as, as being the highest score. But that's sort of boring. I wanted to kind of dive into the details here. What we have here is a, a benchmark comparing um, two competitive desktop drives, a competitive hybrid drive at 750 gigabytes, uh, the previous generation Velociraptor, our VR200M, and our current uh, latest Velociraptor at one terabyte, VR333M in yellow. So as you can see, uh, this does show the eight subtests of PC Mark Vantage. And what I wanted to highlight here is that uh, the performance and each of these subtests is dependent on the read-write mix of each of these subtests. So the uh, subtests on the left, uh, Windows Defender, application loading, gaming, are very read-centric. And mm -hmm. sort of makes sense, right? Gaming, you're loading textures. Yes, using massive amounts of computing power, but you're doing a lot of reads. Mm -hmm. On the right side, you're doing video editing, uh, Windows Media Center, uh, importing pictures. There's actually a lot of writes involved here. And so... When you're looking at write-heavy or write-intensive applications, Velociraptor actually does excel. Now that said, do I only buy Velociraptor for these, you know, for write-intensive applications? No, it does very well in reads as well. So mm. it's it's a better overall storage device where you still get one terabyte to boot, and you get the high reliability. Okay, we have a, another test we wanted to share, which is right. So as we go down here. Um, what this one is, is this uh, little bit different colors here. We have a, a Caviar Black, uh, which is our desktop drive. Um, the uh, previous generation Velociraptor, our one terabyte Velociraptor. This is a competitive hybrid drive, much like shown in the last one. And then a competitive SSD at 120 gigabytes. What this is, is this is lower is better. So it does show Velociraptor um, um, faster than both the SSD and the hybrid in what we call thumbnail generation. So. Um, Many of the photographers out there right, will be familiar with thumbnail generation. If you deal with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of, of pictures, um, many of you would take uh, uh, and generate thumbnails so that you can reference those large pictures. You store the large pictures in you know, some other place and you store the thumbnails uh, more locally. Well, um, the thumbnail generation effort actually, and for many of these photographers, they do this day in, day out. Mm. And it does take time. And you can see here that uh, Using this application to generate thumbnails, um, the Velociraptor does a lot better than uh, any of these other drives, even the previous generation Velociraptor. Now, the reason for this is that when, you, when we looked at, again, the workload profile of what this thumbnail generation does, is it does a lot of, it does a lot of writes, mm -hmm. uh, but it also does a lot of write uh, indexes. So when you look at the prof profile, it's, it is doing a lot of writes. And um, hybrids and SSDs, uh, again, phenomenal in reads, very good in writes, but when you're doing a lot of writes, it, it, it does, they do slow down, and Velociraptor is, uh, it kind of comes out on top. 
and so a perfect example of where in a creative, professional, content creation type world, the Velociraptor is the best all-around storage device. And uh, this is just an example of, the, uh, well, for example, the, the drive going through a bunch of different files, individual files, um, say photo files in this particular demonstration. Uh, it's both reading the data for each photo file, uh, the computer's then generating a thumbnail and then writing that thumbnail file to the drive? Correct, okay. correct. So it's doing both reads and writes. In this case, it's the right, I think it's the right side of this, right, the right part of it that uh, is showing the difference here. Very nice. And uh, that is going to wrap it up for this video. Um, once again, I want to say a big thank you to Brian for coming by, sharing this information, as well as the new uh, Western Digital Velociraptor 1 terabyte with us. And thank you for having me. It's been great. No problem. And uh, for those of you guys who are interested, uh, it's a fantastic drive for uh, all-around content creation as well as just general computer usage. Um, and great that they have now increased the capacity uh, as well as the speed. Uh, again, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. This has been Brian from Western Digital. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.